Harry Potter Year 2. Super excited to dive into this one where we learn the valuable lesson that if we go to Hogwarts and break every single rule possible to break, we will receive special awards and our house will win. You have broken perhaps a dozen school rules. Therefore, it is only fitting that you both receive special awards for services to the school. Welcome to Durbania, I'm Durbin. I'm Laura. And this is our retro review for Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Once again, just in case spoilers lie ahead for this one. So Laura, what did you think of Chamber of Secrets, the movie? The first time I watched it, it is long. It's like two hours and 40 minutes. It's longer minutes. than the first it one, is. yeah. It is, it is very long. But I felt like this one flowed better than the first one. Yeah. Um, and I enjoyed it. It cut out some of the junk from the book, which I like. Mm -hmm. Um, but it also cut out stuff that I thought was also needed, so it kind of went back and forth for me, but if they didn't cut it out, the movie would have been like five hours long. <laughs> what was some of the stuff that you thought it needed from the book that it cut? Well, I like to know the characters better, mm -hmm. like the characters that got petrified. Yes. You hear, like, why they were, not why they were selected, nobody really knows why, they just have to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but they all had sort of like Colin Creevy, who was like taking pictures of Harry everywhere, driving kind of him annoying. bonkers. Yes, you barely see him though, in the True. movie doing that. Whereas in the book, it's just a nuisance. Is he more annoying than Dobby? <laughs> um, probably depends because I both love and hate Dobby yes yes I think I more hate Dobby than love Dobby but I feel guilty instantly saying that knowing Dobby's fate and what a great character Dobby becomes but yeah no in this it was annoying and I also have little issues with the whole Dobby thing in this one because how is he doing the warning without his house's permission Right. And so did Malfoy set him on there? That was never clarified or anything along the, or was he, did he figure out a loophole? And so I just, that's one of those things for me that I wish I had more clarity on. Because Dobby did make it clear he could only do what his house, his owners bid him to do and he can't really do anything else. Mm -hmm. But now here he is at Harry Potter's house doing everything short of killing the kid mm -hmm. to keep the kid from going back to the school to be killed. Yes, and I could believe that Malfoy would say, don't let him get his mail. Yeah. Don't let him get through the, the yeah. barrier. I could easily see them saying that. Yeah, little him. things like that, but but that's not the indication we get. We don't get no, any indication. No, we don't get any indication The indication, the indication is solely that Dobby wants to protect Harry Potter, mm -hmm. and so... And he hears all the, the plans going on with Lucius Malfoy, so that makes it... So I think his... I think if I'm interpreting the film right, the loophole that Dobby found is I can disobey as long as I beat myself to death. Well, house elves beat themselves like if if they do anything out of it's place. The one loophole I'm trying to find here. I know. Well, and I feel like maybe they said something about it and he just went, ooh, I'll take that as an opportunity. Because you see that happen also in the fifth movie with Creature. Right. So um, it's I think they figured out, I, he figured out a way to work around it. Yeah, I don't know. See, Dobby was the most annoying factor in this movie for me. And I know it's supposed to be like this driving force to drive it forward. And we have this sweet moment at the end where Harry Potter tricks Lucius Malfoy. Is that, is that Lucius? Yeah, Lucius yeah. Malfoy into presenting Dobby with a sock so that Dobby becomes free. And it really is a good moment. And it's kind of a moment that almost justifies Dobby's existence and makes him great. Dobby is... You shall not harm Harry Potter! But until that moment, I want to reach through the screen and I want to punch that little thing in the face as hard as I can. And it's part of what really annoyed me when we get, was it book four, where um, Hermione starts the house elf weird thing that she starts? Or is it later in the books? Oh my gosh, it's four or five. I am not certain. Well, somewhere in there where they... Spew! I know what it's called. Yeah, they, but... <laughs> they cut Spew out of the movie, but it's like... And I'm glad that they did, but it kind of drove me nuts that she did that in the books. Not because of Dobby in the books, but because of Dobby in the first movie, because I couldn't get that picture out of my head. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah, sweet ending in movie number two, but oh my gosh. The fact that he took all of Harry's letters so that Harry would feel so horrible about himself and nobody loves him so he doesn't want to go back to school. 
causing him to miss the train, even though that turned out to be a fantastic scene with the flying car, and I really loved that whole scene. It was freaking hilarious, and they crash into the Whomping Tree that magically moved from where it was in movie two to movie three, but that's okay, because it's a magic wizarding world. That's possible. Anyway, I don't know, but... And then the, the, the bludger chasing Harry all over. I mean, Quidditch is his thing, man. He's and Dobby, snitch. I know, but it shows you how great Harry is. But it's like, I look at these films, I'm like, could you just give Harry a good day, please? I mean, come on. He grew up with, with a family. He has lots of good days in the book. Yeah, I know. And the movies just kind of go straight to all the Because it's got to get stuff. to the good stuff. I think my favorite concept in the Chamber of Secrets was parcel tongue and how they parcel mouth. Dang it! Close. But how they brought us into that because like, you know, the first movie he talks to the snake and you kind of just write that off. Oh, it's so magical. But then in this one it makes it like this incredibly rare, almost sacred gift and it's well, scary. Well, because he's probably the only person alive who has exactly. it right now. Exactly, but see that just makes it interesting. It works backwards and makes that scene in the first movie interesting. Mm -hmm. And then what's interesting even more so is before you really realize it's a basilisk, it's a giant snake crawling through the pipes in the walls, mm -hmm. the fact that Harry is hearing a voice and you can hear it you can as hear it, it moving slithers and moves through the walls and it's going kill kill and then the That's line pretty sweet yeah they that did that was, well so like that whole thing with the basilisk and building the mystery of is harry going nuts yeah because you know as hermione Which said you know he's not but no, it's not yeah. a good thing to hear voices. But see, here's what here's what drives me nuts. Maybe it's because I'm more of a paranoid guy, so if something's wrong, I want to tell somebody so I can know am I going and nuts. And he doesn't tell Dumbledore. Well, he has the, the chance. He has an opportunity yeah. right there to say, hey, Dumbledore. Somebody who would have understood and been like, oh, it's probably because you got a piece of Voldemort in you. It's probably a snake. Yes. Boom. Boom. But now I get it, okay? Harry, the whole universe that he's introduced to through Hogwarts is brand new to him. And mm -hmm. he's trying to figure out who to trust and not trust. Yeah. But I would have just figured he's earned Dumbledore's trust after the first movie. Like, yeah. he can trust. And he he yeah. says how he can, knows he can trust Dumbledore and he feels safe when Dumbledore's around. Except, you know, when Hermione says that one line, even hearing voices is dangerous for wizards, Harry. And then he just, you know, can't tell the one person he could be safe in telling about the voice crawling through the walls mm -hmm. because, you know, having the hindsight of seeing this movie several times before, it makes me even matter he doesn't divulge it because it's like, I have the whole picture in my mind, so I know how all of this is gonna turn out. Freaking tell him what's going on, Harry, and we could save Ginny Weasley so much earlier. Oh. Yeah, Ginny being a shy little girl irritates me too. Oh, gosh. Because <laughs> I'm like, she, she, she's, nervous around Harry because she likes him. She loves him. And so it's just the whole thing was, oh, I'm like, there's little parts there, but then I look at it and I'm like, yep, that's what 11 and 12 year olds would do. So it fits. Yep. So that's why I just kind of shrug it off and move on. Yes. What is, Kenneth Branagh, I almost forgot his oh, name. Oh, Professor I, Lockhart. Professor Lockhart is awesome, but I love Kenneth Branagh. He directed no, the first Thor movie. He's fantastic. Perfect. And, yes, he did. He was so... Like, he was annoying and irritating, but you love it. Mm -hmm. Like, you love to hate that guy. Yeah. And so every time he's on screen, he shines. And I love everybody eye-rolling because it's hilarious how it's obvious to everybody what a liar and yeah. a fraud he is, though they can't quite prove and it. And how he's so obsessed with himself. Oh, my gosh. Okay, the introduction where he's teaching the dark arts class, Defense Against the Dark Arts, and he's walking down, and there's a painting of him painting himself. Yeah. It was just this one time that stood out to me, the freaking hilarity that he poses by a picture of himself, painting a picture of himself, while the picture of himself then poses while doing a picture of himself. It was just, I just it love funny, that. Cause that's, that's who Lockhart is. Yes. He's so vain. Yes. I gotta say though, in this movie, so the first movie I identified the most with Seamus, I hope I, I really hope I'm saying his name right, but because he kept blowing things yeah, up. Yeah, Finnegan. Because I feel like that would be me. Yeah. But in this movie, I identified with Ron Weasley because of his absolute fear of spiders. Why spiders? Oh, yeah, well, and also, don't you hate slugs? <laughs> it was simultaneously oh the funniest 
part of the movie, and I gagged every time he's... Now, yeah, <laughs> another one came out. Uh. And it just, it just kept going. It was great. And they did a good job with his face, because, like... His face was so pale green. Oh, it and, was like oh he had gosh. been throwing up for days is what it looked like. It was, I was disturbing. Yeah. But yes, the fear of spiders, definitely. Yeah, no, I relate to that. The whole thing in the woods with uh, Aragog, I was like, I, you're going to bite it in the sixth movie. I cannot wait for that. Gosh. Good thing you said there were spoilers. Yes, yes. <laughs> when I say spoilers, I don't mean just the one All movie. All Harry Potter. All Harry Potter. Yes. It's just going to be, but, you know, I'm just assuming everybody's seen them all by this point, but I don't know. I And then the other thing that I like is kind of the background we get, like Hagrid. We, we go our flashback 50 years ago through the journal, which is so interesting watching this movie now, knowing the seventh and eighth movie and mm -hmm. what the journal really is and how Tom Riddle exists in the yep. journal. Like, it makes it so much more interesting to me knowing all of that mm -hmm. and kind of piecing it together. Because I haven't watched these movies in a long time, so it's cool to go back and it's like, ah, I get this better than I've ever gotten it. But then to go back 50 years and baby Aragog, I wish they just stomped on him right there oh. when they opened up the treasure chest and he comes running out. But it was cool to get Hagrid 50 years ago mm -hmm. and get kind of that backstory between Hagrid and he who shall not be named <laughs> and how yeah, he and you framed know Hagrid. You know what's sad is in um, the movie, there was no reason for them to go to the Forbidden Forest. None. Because when they come back to Hermione, the paper that was very obviously clenched in her hands and somebody should have seen it talked about yep. how spiders flee before it and how, and like, and they saw the spiders fleeing, so they would have known that that was what was going down. But, yeah. so I just, I, I didn't I even was, think about that yet. Yeah, there was no point for them no. to go because Except they uncrumpled to find, the paper. You know their their feral car. Okay, well that was awesome. <laughs> so I, I did enjoy the car rescue and yes. all that stuff. But yeah, now now that I totally think about that, yeah, that entire scene was useless. And because they found the paper, they could have shaved some time off. Yep. They should have just had them go to Hagrid's. They watch Hagrid get arrested and go to Azkaban, mm -hmm. and we're done because yep. they already knew about the spiders thanks to our genius Hermione that even in a petrified state is able to help them. Yeah, she was ready. Yeah. yeah. Hermione is pretty, pretty awesome. I don't know. It's, it's funny because you, you kind of nailed it at the beginning. And then I think I'm kinda, I don't know what else to say about this movie. But the flow of this movie was better. And it I think, was better. Because that happens like TV shows and everything. Like you, you do it once, you do it again, and you get more to a flow of who mm -hmm. these characters are. The child actors well, And they're working are into yeah. their role. They know how to be that character. And yes. I mean, they just get better and better as the movies go. Yeah. And so, and again, this was our last time seeing Richard Harris as Dumbledore. And I just... I think he even died the year the movie came out, if I, I, I saw don't it remember. on IMDb. It's been quite a while. But I, he just was so, so brilliant in this. He, he I just, was, I love he was him as Dumbledore. Dumbledore. And so, yeah, anyway. It is what it is. I don't know what else to say. I, I said everything I could say nice about Richard Harris in the first review we did. Yeah. He is Dumbledore. That's how I will forever see Dumbledore. And I'm sure Jude Law will do a great job. I'm sure he will. But I, I'm sorry, just... I like Jude Law as an actor. I'm very I do hopeful. too. I do too. And I am very hopeful for him. But it's just, I'm sorry. It's Richard Harris. That is who I see as, as Dumbledore. But yeah. So I really, really like the movie. Again, going to hold back from giving it a grade because we are going to rank. As soon as the second Fantastic Beasts come out, we're going to rank them all. All of them. All of them. It's going to be a lot of movies. To best. So... <laughs> This is almost like our video diaries, our notes of our thoughts as yes. we organize it before we finally sit down to fully rank these movies. But I think we'll see how my mind changes and how things stay with me in my memory as we get months ahead here. I like this one a little bit better than the first one because it flowed a little bit better and they were more into their characters. And so I just, yeah, I feel like there's a bit more of a flow and I enjoyed it. See, I'm like neck and neck for these two. And that's because... The first one is the first one, and the adaptation to the book is amazing. Yeah. But the second one, for the same reasons that you said. So it's, I don't know which one I like better. Mm. Well, we got some time to think about it. Yes. Time for you to flip a coin, and and, uh, and we'll just figure go that. With it. Out. Yes. Awesome. What did you think of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Let us know that in the comments. And while you're there, add into that discussion how excited are you for Fantastic Beast? Too. So let's talk about that in the comments. Hit the subscribe button to become a Durbanian and hit the bell by that button so you're notified for our next Harry Potter review, movie review, ranking video, theological analysis, or anything else we do here. I'm Durban. I'm Laura. Thanks for checking out Durbania. Durbania.